All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Evans, the founder of the Ash Exchange International, and we are on day 24 of 31 days of Proverbs and Prayers. So thank you for joining me this morning. Um, we'll go ahead and get started, and I'll just open up with a quick word of prayer. So Father God, thank you so much for waking us up this morning. Thank you for your guidance, your protection, even throughout the night, Heavenly Father. Thank you for speaking to us in our dreams and just continuously giving us comfort and the rest that is needed for us to maneuver through our day today. Father God, thank you for the word that is going to go forth. I thank you for the revelation that you are imparting. And I just ask that the Holy Spirit would just speak whatever he needs to be spoken, Lord God. Heavenly Father, allow the Holy Spirit to saturate this whole conversation, Lord God, that it would glorify you, that it would begin to Im that it would begin to embed your word upon your, our heart, Lord God, that we would Im implement it and internalize it, Lord God. So, Father God, I just thank you, and I, I'm really grateful, Lord, just for the opportunity to be able to do this freely, understanding, Heavenly Father, that we should never take these opportunities for granted. We give you all the honor and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So um, we're going to start at verse one, of course. So we're at Proverbs 24. And a lot of these Proverbs are um, like instructions, but also warnings. And so I hope you have your Bible so that way you can read along and take notes as you're um, looking through the Proverbs because some will stand out to you. A little bit more um, some will be more relevant to you in this moment in this season than others but nevertheless um, they are all worth taking time to reflect on or to go back and reflect on so verse 20 well verse 1 and verse 2 it says do not be envious of evil men nor desire to be with them for their minds plot violence and their lips talk of trouble for the innocent and this is just another reminder of just being cautious about the company you keep and not having that yearning to be in environments where people you know they're operating out of evil. Verse 3 through 4. Through skillful and godly wisdom, a house, a life, a home, a family. It's built and by understanding it is established on a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge, its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And I think this is a good scripture to keep in your back pocket, um, just to speak over your life, you know, um, through wisdom, you know, your house, your life, your family is built. And by understanding it, it is established on a sound and good foundation. And these are things we should be speaking over our lives, over our households, over our families, uh, because these are things that God desires to do for us and he will utilize wisdom to get that done verses five through six a wise man is strong and a man of knowledge strengthens his power for by wise guidance you can wage your war and in an abundance of wise counselors there is victory and safety and i thought this was very powerful um, especially when you think about how god is orchestrating connections and orchestrating mentors counselors and those around us it, the fact that it says, for by wise guidance, you can wage your war. We want to thank God for the wise guidance that he offers directly from himself, but also through people that he has surrounded us with. Verses se verse 7. Wisdom is too exalted for a hardened, arrogant fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate where the city's rulers sit in judgment. Verse 8 through 9. He who plans to do evil will be called a schemer or divisor of evil. The devising of folly is sin, and the scoffer is repulsive to men. Verses 10 through 12. If you are slack or careless in the day of distress, your strength is limited. Rescue those who are being taken away to death, and those who stagger to the slaughter. Oh, oh, hold them back from their doom. If you claim ignorance, say, see, we did not know this. Does he not consider it who weighs and examines the hearts and their motives? And does he not know it who, regard, who guards your life and keeps your soul? And will he not repay you and every man according to his works? 
And even in these last few um, scriptures, a lot of times this is referenced to when Christians try to, when we as believers have a moment of looking the other way. So for instance, um, when we think about topics like abortion or we think about topics um, where there's unjust judgment that takes place on behalf of believers or the innocent or any form of injustice for the innocent, innocent, you know, even with human trafficking, if we look the other way and we try to say, oh, I didn't know this, you know, a lot of times that trying to claim that ignorance is not acceptable to God. Um, as a believer in Christ, we are to care about the matters of this world. We are positioned to help those who cannot help themselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what we want to make sure that we're doing is that we're being alert. We're being aware. We're being in the know. I know sometimes, you know, we want to sit in our little corner and just not care. But the reality is, is that God has created us to be change agents on this earth. He has created us to be his image bearers. And being his image bearers means we do have a form of influence. And there is a level of impact he desires for us to make. And so sometimes I know there are a lot of people who, you know, don't watch news. Like I don't even watch it a lot. But then there are certain things the Holy Spirit will highlight to me that are happening in the world. And, you know, he will highlight the injustices. And although I may not be able to tangibly do anything about it yet, I do take it to prayer. And I do believe that prayer is a, first, is a starting point in regards to how you're able to help and intercede for those who are struggling for themselves. And if you have a relationship or a connection or an, an ability to actually physically do something, well, then it is a responsibility for us to actually go and do it. And so, like, even um, even a few minutes ago, you know, I, I saw a report where the women in um, Afghanistan were told they can no longer be educated. And, you know, that's, that's hor a horrible feeling, especially knowing myself and how the Lord has blessed me to be able to go to school and still take classes and to freely gain knowledge. And even as we read through Proverbs and we're just, we're gaining knowledge, we're gaining understanding, we're gaining insight and how the Taliban has really shut that door and gone back on their word and prevented these women from having that same opportunity. And so even things like that, you know, it's not something that we turn a blind eye to. Um, it's something that we can take to prayer because oftentimes we take these things for granted. And so whatever the Lord highlights to you, whether it's homelessness, whether it's um, abortion, whether it's human trafficking, whether it's... Um, um, illiteracy, whether it's, you know, women's rights, whatever the Holy Spirit has placed on your heart, definitely don't turn a blind eye. Understand that the Holy Spirit will highlight those things because he needs you to play a part in, um, in shifting those things. Verse 13 through 14, it says, my son, eat honey because it is good. And the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. And when he says honey, he's he's likening it to wisdom. So he's saying wisdom is as sweet. He's saying wisdom is as sweet as honeycomb. Verse 14, know that skillful and godly, not godly, godly wisdom is so very good for your life and soul. If you find wisdom, then there will be a future and a reward. And your hope and expectation will not be cut off. Verse 15 and 16. Do not lie in wait, a wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not destroy his resting place. For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in time of a disaster and collapse. Now in verse 16 where it says, For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in time of disaster and collapse. This, was, um, this is something to reassure you that as a child of God, Yes, there will be times that we will fall, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to rise up again. Now, those who are wicked, who operate out of the, the heart of the enemy, they, there will be a time, you know, where they will experience disaster and they will fall, but they won't be able to get up. And so that's something that we need to also take into consideration when we do hit hard times, when we are struggling because we have to look back and actually give God the glory for the times when we did fall. And he actually 
allowed us to come back up. He helped us to come up. He sent other believers to work with us to come back up. And so we don't we don't have to sit with the mindset of doom and gloom like it's over. No, as children of God, he he loves us so much that he will help pick us back up. Verse 17 through 18. Do not rejoice and gloat when your enemy falls and do not let your heart be glad in self-righteousness when he stumbles or the Lord will see your gloating and be displeased and turn his anger away from your enemy. Now, I know some people will read this and probably think, well, why is he going to, you know, why does my response impact what he does? The reality is, is that God needs us to maintain a, a pure heart posture no matter what the situation is. And that's why most of the time when something happens to our enemies, like when the vindication happens, a lot of times God won't allow us to be present to see it because he does need our heart postures to stay pure. And so even if we do see it, we want to make sure that we're not going around like, oh, that, that happened because they did this, this, and this to me and ha, 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 and all this stuff because ultimately, you know, that's not the heart of God. Like if God disciplines you know, it's a consequence, but even in that, he wants people to learn their lesson and to be reconciled back to him. So even when, you know, we do wrongs and things, and even when there are consequences or people who are wicked, ultimately, he does want to give them the opportunity to give their life back to him. And so we don't want to sit here and glow and laugh and stuff like it's um, a joke, but we do want to just... um just pray for them. And then, you know, a lot of times I just pray for mercy and strength because I do recognize that, Hey, this is a consequences that consequence that they're getting. But if they're still, if they're still alive, there's hope for them to be reconciled back to God. And that is the ultimate goal. Verses 19 through 20. Do not get upset because of evildoers or be, or be envious of the wicked for there will be no future for evil man. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. And this is just another reminder of um, how we as believers in Christ, we are granted eternal life. And that is not afforded to those who are evil and who are wicked. And sometimes I think because we, because eternal life seems so far for many of us, we don't really take factor that in as we go about our days or as we're communing with God as we're living our life here. Sometimes we get so focused in on this life that we're living right now, not remembering that look. We, um, we have a life in eternity. We have the privilege of living with Christ forever. And so that's why one of the books I really love is Driven by Eternity. With, um, it's by John Bevere. And because it, it helps you recognize that you're not living this life just for your time on earth. You're living your life for eternity with Christ. Verse 21 through 22. My son, fear the Lord and the king, and do not associate with those who are given to change of allegiance and are, and are revolutionary. For their tragedy will rise suddenly, and who knows the punishment that both the Lord and the king will bring on the rebellious. So this is important to so just be mindful about the company you keep. Be mindful about the allegiances that are made. Um, make sure people aren't operating out of rebellion. For instance, I think when I was reading this, I was thinking about um, it being in Houston, Texas, and when, you know, um, George Floyd, you know, was murdered, and we saw all these, all the upheaval, and we saw all the protests taking place, and we saw the Black Lives Matter um, organization begin to increase. And one thing I recognized was as the Black Lives Matter um, organization was increasing, it was getting confused with the movement of trying to highlight, yes, black people matter, but then there was this this demonic side of the Black Lives Matter organization where it was becoming as if we were trying to become superior to of every other race, and that is not the heart of God. And so at that point, that's where a spirit of rebellion was sneaking in. And so there were a lot of people, you know, out of emotion, out of ignorance, you know, just you know, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, but the Holy Spirit was just like disengaged. Like this is not the heart. This is not my heart. My heart is never to create hierarchies or to or to end white supremacy with black supremacy. Like that's not the heart of Christ. And so, a lot of times people fall into that mindset of just you know 
black, 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 and I, I'm saying this as a black woman, but the Holy Spirit is like, I never created this world to be, to idolize race to the point where you don't know how to love people genuinely. You don't know how to honor people because you're so fixated on your race. And so, you know, I think, I think a lot of times it's ingrained in us growing up in our families and stuff. But one thing we have to make sure we don't do is we don't fall into rebellion and don't fall into idolatry of um, these earthly situations and these different, you know, I, I call them sneak attacks, plots and schemes of the enemy to create more division. Verse 23 it says, these also are sayings of the wise. And so he's going to begin to say some more of uh, sayings of wisdom. It says, to show partiality in judgment is not good. And that means, a lot. that basically means being fickle. Like, you know, you have some people who don't like making decisions, don't like making judgments, don't like to, you know, say, hey, this is wrong. You have some people who like to straddle the fence and, um, there, there are times where the Holy Spirit will tell you to just not make a comment, but then there are times where you know this is wrong and it's not right. And sometimes he will position you to actually verbalize that and speak up on it. Verse 24 says, he who says to the wicked, you are righteous. Peoples will, peoples will curse him. Nations will denounce him. But to those honorable judges who rebuke the wicked, it will go well with them and they will find the light and good blessing will come upon them. And I thought this was really important because I know we see injustice all the time and we do see people who um, who just tend to not acknowledge when people have done wicked things. And so even when, like, even though this is, it says honorable judges and it may be um, symbolism, I even think of it in our court systems. Like there's so much corruption in governments across the world that when you do find someone who's willing to speak up and speak out against wickedness, there is a joy that I know I feel, especially when I know, look, they're a child of God and they're, they're owning their position as a child of God um, in a natural way. And those are definitely people you definitely want to keep in prayer because it takes a lot to be bold and to go against the grain and to speak out against these things. And you can function in that same capacity within any um, area, sphere of influence. You know, if you're in education, you see a lot of corruption. And there are times you have to be the advocate for your students. You have to be the advocate for, you know, maybe someone who's being mistreated, um, whatever the case may be in hospitals. Sometimes you can, if you're a nurse, you might see something, social worker, and you have to be the advocate for that. And so being able to speak against the wickedness wherever you are, that is something that we are called to do. It's something that um, the Holy Spirit has allowed us, empowered us to do. So we never just want to be passive and just sit around and not say something when we see something wrong. Verse 26, he kisses the lips and wins the hearts of the people who gives a right and straightforward answer. And this goes back to not being fickle, not being double-minded, not being that person who's wavering back and forth. Like, um, it's kind of like, let, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Verse 27, prepare your work outside and get it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, build your house and establish a home. Verse 28, do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause and do not deceive with your lips. Speak neither lies nor half truths. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay the man back for his deed. And this is a reminder for us to not, to not be malicious, to not be vengeful, to not have in our mind that um, I'm going to do this because they did this to me. I'm going to get them back. Don't even allow yourself to utter those words. And just be mindful, like, a lot of times people do speak half truths and sometimes they do it they don't even realize it um it's sometimes it's like a coping mechanism that's done out of experiencing very traumatic experiences when they did tell the truth and although yes that's understandable we still shouldn't do it and so even if that's something that you've dealt with before um 
you know, I, I don't know why the whole experience having me explain it in that route, but if that is something you have dealt with before, like maybe you were intimidated when you were younger, you um, dealt with someone who's very aggressive, abrasive, and it would cause you to lie just to avoid getting in certain situations, that's something you seek the Father about because there are adults who function like that out of fear and who do tell these lies and have truths because they think it will cover and protect them. And so even then, um, I would take heed to that. And if you know somebody who struggles with that, just be praying for them for their deliverance and their healing. Verses 30 through 34, it says, I went by the field of the lazy man and by the vineyard of the man lacking understanding and common sense. And behold, it was all overgrown with thorns and nettles were covering its surface and its stone wall was broken down. When I saw, I considered it well. I looked and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and daydream. Then your poverty will come as a robber and your want like an armed man. And this is just an example that he's giving of what happens when you are lazy, when you, um, when you don't do what he's asked you to do. This is not to say anything against rest. Yes, the Lord wants us to rest. But there are certain times where he's like, I need you to do A, B, and C. And if we sit back and we sleep and we don't do what he says, He's basically showing us like it will look, poverty will sneak up on us. You know, it will come and it will take over the things that were established to actually be fruitful. All right. So um, this is all the verses for Proverbs 24. Once again, there are different sayings. Some may apply to you now. Some may apply to you later. That's why I always encourage people to go back and just meditate on it. But, um, you know, we're going to pray. And as we pray, just allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the things that he needs to highlight to you. And um, for him to just speak to you and give you some revelation about things going on in your personal life. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you so much for the opportunity to just come before you and to breathe your word freely and to really gain insight and wisdom as it pertains to how to live our lives. Father God, we just ask that you would begin to search our hearts, Lord God, and examine our hearts. Shift our motives, Lord God, that we will have pure motives when we, in everything that we do. Father, forgive us for the times when we allow our feelings, our emotions, our experiences to dictate how and why we do things for you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, as we are reading through your scripture, Lord, you just kept highlighting the importance of justice, the importance of not being wicked, the importance of not being vengeful. So, Father God, we just ask that you would begin to uproot any form of bitterness or resentment or anger that would cause us to walk in, in evil, evil thoughts, Lord God. Lord, that you will begin to remove, Lord God, anything that would, that would cause us to have a hardened heart that would lead to any form of just negligence in any form of thinking we don't have to deal with things or do certain things because we're angry lord father god protect our hearts and our minds heavenly father and, and lord just begin to dismantle and destroy the heart the hard-heartedness lord that we will walk with a heart of flesh heavenly father lord god just give us a clean heart heavenly father and renew it and renew our right spirit within us lord god that we will walk according to your will and your way heavenly father Lord God, just pray for every single person on this call, Lord, for you have called each and every one of us 
to be advocates, Lord. Just like the Holy Spirit is an advocate for us, Lord God, you have positioned us to be advocates for those who are less fortunate, those who don't know or can't defend themselves. So, Father God, even now, I ask that you begin to highlight, Lord, who are those that you have called us to be the defenders for? Who are those that you have called us to speak life into? Who are those that you have called us to be the advocates for, Lord God? Father God, I pray that you just create an unction within us to, to do something and to say something, Heavenly Father, that we would not be complacent or passive, that we would not think that our only task on this earth is to just sit and love you and just, and just mind our own business and not get involved with the things of this world. Father God, you have positioned us to be the change agents, Lord. You use people to move your plan and your purpose forward, Lord God. So Heavenly Father, let us not get too comfortable, Heavenly Father, being in these seasons of where we don't have that type of quote-unquote influence or we don't have that type of um that type of impact. Lord God, it's in the little things. Even our prayers are have the capacity to shift things. So Father God, let us not be ignorant. Let us not be willfully ignorant. Father God, challenge us, Lord, to become knowledgeable and aware and to take heed to the voice that you have, to your voice, Lord God. Help us to take heed to the instruction that you give us. Help us to take heed to the warnings that you give us, Lord God, that we will be able to be um, advocates, that we will pray on that on their behalf, Heavenly Father. Father, even now, Lord God, since you, since you brought up abortion, Lord God, and you know, you brought up the racial injustices and you brought up human trafficking, Father God, all of those areas are, are places where the innocent has been taken advantage of, the innocent has been abused. So Lord God, we even now pray that you will begin to move supernaturally and send and send laborers on our behalf, Lord God, who can go in and help set the, set them set them free, Heavenly Father, that they would no longer live in bondage, Lord God. Father God, create strategy, create resources, Heavenly Father, that they would that people would be able to go in and be the hands and feet of you, Lord, in that place, Lord God. Father God, set the children free. Even now before the holidays, Father God, I just ask that there will be more and more revelation announcements of, of individuals being set free that um people kids and young women and children lord who are in human who have been kidnapped in human trafficking father god we pray we pray that you will begin to dismantle the plans of the enemy lord god that you will create a way of escape lord god that you would even allow lord that the the those who are victims to be set free heavenly father father god we know that you are a powerful and mighty god and we understand the power of prayer so lord god we are just truly believing that there will be a level a heightened level of freedom that takes place physical freedom freedom, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we thank you for the places that you have already established through your children, Lord God, the rehabilitation centers, Lord God, the safe, the safe houses, Heavenly Father. And Lord God, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you are breaking those ties, Lord God, that even now you are breaking the, 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 the demons that try to torment people who have been abused, who have been kidnapped, who have been in these environments where they were taken advantage of. Father God, show them your love. Show them your, your presence, Lord. Give them divine experiences and encounters that they would know that you are God and that this was never your desire for their lives. But Father God, you are there with them and you are going to set them free, Heavenly Father. Because Lord God, we do know that even no matter the situation, whether it's good or bad, you will get the glory, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, even now, I pray for um, those who, who have had abortions, Lord God, those who are contemplating abortion. Father God, we pray for them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, to begin to send laborers to support them, Lord God. Begin to give them a different point of view, Heavenly Father, that they would recognize that just because they may be struggling now, you are a God of miracles. You are a God of provision. You will make a way, Heavenly Father, that they will be able to care for their child, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, I pray against the spirit of hopelessness which often drives people to have abortions, Lord God. Father God, we break off the enemy's attempt to, to, to destroy their minds and to consume their hearts and minds, Lord God. Lord, we know it is not your will that any person should, should perish, that any child should be taken out of this life ahead of what you have designed, Lord God. So Father God, we just speak right now, anyone who's contemplating it, Lord God, that you would begin to speak life into them, reassure them, Lord God, show them, Lord 
God, that despite the mistake they made, their child is not a mistake, Lord. You are very intentional when it comes to children being born, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, we break off that spirit of hopelessness. We break off that spirit of murder that's trying to creep upon them. And we declare in the creed in the mighty name of Jesus that this will be a season, Lord God, where there will be a, a, a supernatural decrease in abortions, Lord God. Lord, that there will be testimonies of women, Lord God, who will say, I thought about it, but something, but something in me said, don't do it. Something in me, there was like a glimpse of hope that came upon them, Lord God. Because Heavenly Father, we know that there is something that you are doing through the children that are birthed in this season, Lord. We know they are powerhouses. We know that they are kingdom, they are kingdom um, shifters, Lord God. That they are shifting the trajectory of this world, Lord God. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you are already moving on our behalf, Lord, to, to protect those children. That they may be born born heavenly father and father god speak against the word curses that are often spoken by adults and parents lord god as a result of the evil things that we see where they say oh i'm afraid to birth a child in this world or i don't want to have children father god if that is not your will for their life we cancel those word curses in the mighty name of jesus and we destroy the spirit of fear lord god because we recognize that is the root of those comments heavenly father lord god let us understand and be confident in knowing that because we serve you and we are your children that we shall not fear for anything because the hedge of protection that you have around us is flowing down to our children and our children's children. We thank you, Lord God, that you are covering them in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you that we can have hope and faith. We thank you that we can be excited for the new births that are taking place. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for even those women who desire children who have been struggling, Lord, that you will begin to um, shift things in their womb, Heavenly Father, that there will be testimonies of supernatural birthings, Lord God, that despite what Dr have said, Lord God, you are going to show yourself real and worthy, Lord God. You are going to demonstrate your power and your authority, Heavenly Father, and show even doctors, Heavenly Father, just the power that you embody, Lord. Father God, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for just highlighting this, Lord God. And Father God, we just uh, want to lift up those around the nation who don't have the capacity or the freedom to serve you or to read your word or to be educated, Lord God. As we're reading Proverbs, there is a constant, a constant Instant, um, instruction for us to get wisdom, get understanding, get knowledge. So Lord God, I can't fathom being in a place, Lord God, where we can't even read a book. We can't even go to school. Father God, let us not forsake the privilege that we have here in the U.S., Lord God. Let us not forsake the privilege that we have to even be on this call together to pray and intercede and to gain wisdom and to gain understanding, to gain knowledge freely, Lord God. Father God, we just pray for those who have experienced the up. We have we pray for those who are being limited. We pray for those who are being tormented. We pray for those whose rights are being taken advantage of, Lord God. And Lord, we just believe that you are going to move supernaturally, Heavenly Father. We believe, Lord God, you are going to shift the scales, Lord God. Father God, we believe in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you will create a way of escape, Lord God. That there will be leaders within who will be able to go out and be and be dispersed, Heavenly Father. That they will be able to create systems that they will be able to find a loophole that will allow them to, to educate those, Lord God, who you need to be educated so that they may rise up as voices for the kingdom of God, that they may rise up to be change agents in the nations in which they serve, Lord God. And Father God, if there is anything that you desire for us to do on this end, of, on this side of the world, where we have more resources, Lord God, begin to cre begin to create a stirring within our heart, begin to d drop ideas and um and strategies, Lord God, and how we can support, Lord God. Because Heavenly Father, as your word stated, Lord, we will not be the individuals who sit back and say, oh, I did not know. Father God, you are highlighting things to us all the time, and we may not be able to physically do anything, but right now we can pray, and we can declare and decree, Lord God, that you will raise up individuals to serve as laborers on our behalf. You will raise up individuals to gain the finances or to 
to sponsor things, Heavenly Father, because, Heavenly Father, we know that your desire is for us to work collectively to see transformation and impact in this world, Lord God. So, Father God, I just speak against the spirit of isolation. I speak against working in silos and competition. Lord God, there are too many um, organizations and churches that are too busy trying to follow, further their own agenda, that they are unwilling to partner with other organizations to have a greater impact. Father God, we bind the spirit of pride in the mighty name of Jesus and we ask that you will help us to walk in humility that you will help us to see your vision as being bigger than what we want in our own flesh Lord God that Heavenly Father we will be willing to say you know what I may have wanted this but according to the Lord this will bring us greater victory so we will merge and partner and do whatever is necessary so even when it comes to churches, Lord God, Father God, I just declare and decree that there will be more partnerships. There will be more collaboration, Lord God, for whatever one church lacks, another church embodies and is strengthened in, Lord God, that we will be able to be stronger and go forth before the kingdom, Heavenly Father. So Lord God, even with us, let us not work in silos. Let us not be haughty. Let us not be afraid of, of, of somebody, quote unquote, doing better than us or something like that. Father God, we dismantle and destroy and take gaps of every thought that tries to rise above your word, Lord God, and your knowledge, Heavenly Father. If it doesn't align to you, Lord God, begin to burn away those thoughts, Lord God, that create more tension and division, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we know you have called us, Lord God, to be the vessels, to be the to the change agents, to be the, the hands and feet on this ground, Lord God. So, Lord, we will not forsake the position that you have, posi that you have called us to. We will not forsake the 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 instructions that you give us we will not forsake the uh, position that you've given us Lord God the mandate the assignment the task whatever you are asking of us Lord God we will not forsake it in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God and Father God I just pray even now there is a stirring that is taking place within each and every one of us Lord God a stirring to walk in righteousness a stirring to study your word a stirring to love better Lord God a stirring to pour into others, Lord God, not being afraid of what we don't have yet, Lord God, but knowing, Lord, that as we sow, you will bring a harvest back to our lives, Heavenly Father, and the harvest will be greater than what we could have even imagined, Lord God. So, Father God, help us to not function with a spirit of poverty. Help us to not function um, in a gluttonous spirit. Help us to not function where we're lazy and we, we, we're very, we just sleep and we just sit. And Lord God, that is not your will for our lives. So, Lord, Lord God, we just, the, we just bind up anything that will hinder us from flowing at the pace that you need us to flow in, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that you are beginning to break down some mindsets, Lord breaking away some ungodly belief systems that we have allowed ourselves to believe based because of our family, because of bad experiences, because of what we've been taught. Father God, if it does not align with your word, begin to dismantle the thought in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to unlearn things, Heavenly Father, that may feel okay, but it does not align with your word, Heavenly Father. Father God, we break off the spirit of idolatry in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. God, and we declare and decree that you are the Lord and our Savior. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are the great I Am. So therefore, Lord God, any form of idolatry that is lingering around us, any idols, Lord God, we tear down. We tear them down in the mighty name of Jesus. They have no power and no authority over us, Lord God. For Lord, we do not want anything to try to distract us from you, Heavenly Father, because we know you are too good of a father for us to allow other things to become more important than you heavenly father so lord god even in our efforts to to love on our uh, to love on people we know heavenly father even in our efforts to support businesses lord god help us to not idolize lord help us to not fall into um a, a hidden form of division and um in to fall into any form of isms, Lord God, whether it's racism, classism, um, whether it's uh, favoritism, Lord God, whatever the isms are, Lord, we just rebuke and bind those mindsets in the name of Jesus. And we declare and decree, Lord God, that we walk with the kingdom mindset. We walk with your, your presence, your glory, your thoughts, your love, Heavenly Father, that our mind is renewed by the word of God, Heavenly Father. And Lord God, that doesn't mean we're ignorant to the things of this world, but in fact, it 
it means that we we are aware of the things of this world and we tackle them with the spirit mindset first and that we trust lord god that you will begin to give us revelation in regards to how we manage it in the natural lord so father god i just thank you lord that you are growing us in your word i thank you that you are maintaining our heart that you are ensuring that we walk with a pure heart lord god that we will not rejoice at those who are being um repaid for the evil they they have done we will not rejoice for the enemies that we have encountered lord god but we will pray mercy lord god upon their lives that we will pray for their strength because ultimately lord god our desire is to see that every person who is falling into wickedness would be reconciled back to you, Lord God, because there is hope, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, even now, we just pray that you are breaking down those 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 evil altars, Lord God, that have kept people in bondage, that have created those strongholds, Lord God. Set the captives free right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that they would come to know you, Lord God, that they would there would be a hunger and a yearning for who you are, Lord God. Show yourself to them right now now, Lord God, even as some people are sleeping, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we recognize, Lord, this is Christmas Eve, Heavenly Father, and that there are many, Lord, who, who don't understand the significance of the birth of Jesus Christ. But Father God, we do. So Lord God, just as you, Jesus, came into this world, Lord God, we just ask that you would just come into people's lives, Lord God, create encounters that they would know who you are, that they would experience your presence and your love, that they would tangibly feel it, Heavenly Father father within the depths of their heart lord god that to where there is something that creates a yearning for them heavenly father to come before you lord jesus so father god we thank you lord that even in, in studying these these words lord god even in studying these these this wisdom and gaining it lord god you are still being glorified heavenly father you are teaching us the ways that we need to think the ways that we need to process things the ways that we need to love on people the ways that we need to govern ourselves and situations heavenly father that we may glorify you that we may be influent influential to those who have yet to come to know you heavenly father so lord god thank you thank you for choosing us thank you for for giving us the, the ability for building our capacity stretching us heavenly father that we may go out and do greater works on your behalf heavenly father understanding that yes it may look different from each other lord god but if you are at the forefront if you are giving the instruction then father god we are in a perfect alignment with your will lord god so heavenly father we just thank you for the good work that you're doing in the season we thank you for the work that you're doing within us and the work that you're doing through us father god father god we declare and decree that there will be no backlash or retaliation among any person who hears this prayer lord god and that you would begin to that you would seal every single prayer with the blood of jesus heavenly father and we declare heavenly father that everything that was spoken lord god opens the door for activation through the holy spirit for conviction through the holy spirit for our pro for us to be propelled and launched in the direction that you desire for us to go in through the Holy Spirit, Lord God. We thank you and we give you all the honor and the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So thank you all for being on the prayer. And um, we're going to go ahead and close. And I'm just grateful that you all were able to just join us um, because God is faithful and we do understand that God is doing a lot right now. And I'm praying that even as you are, even as you're gleaning, as you're hearing the word, that you are understanding that God is, has something more for you to do. Like getting all this wisdom, getting all this understanding, getting all this knowledge is not just for you to store it for your own life, but there is something God is calling you to. And I pray that he exposes and reveals it to you on this day. So God bless you all. Happy, you know, Christmas Eve. I know it feels different if you're in Houston. It's cold and we don't like cold. So um, just be praying for us. And so uh, I do hope that y'all have a wonderful day. I hope that you have a restful day, that you have time to just honor God and just seek his face and just be in his presence in your own personal time. So I love you all. Thank you. And yes, we will be on tomorrow morning. I know it's, it's Christmas, but guess what? We still love Jesus every day. And so we will have prayer tomorrow. God bless you all. Bye.